All right, so yes, I am very late to this trend. A few months, if you consider the first time these sandwiches came out. I don't live anywhere near a Popeyes, unfortunately. We're driving 45 minutes to the nearest one to get their spicy chicken sandwich. If you are living under a rock and you don't know the hysteria that these things have caused, uh, people have died over them. So as you can tell by the title, today I am pitting up Popeye's famous spicy chicken sandwich versus Bon Appetit, their best spicy chicken sandwich made by Claire. It's crazy how wide this angle is. It is, actually. This is the Casey Neistat angle. <laughs> Let's go get some sandwiches. Ladies and gentlemen, the bag has been secured. This is what somebody got stabbed over. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm sure there was car accidents, people wait hours, miss work. Whoa. Look at how good this chicken looks, first of all. Oh man. If you gave me this and told me to just try it, the last thing I would ever guess was that it came from a fast food restaurant. This sandwich has the perfect level of spice. It's super juicy and tender. It's cooked perfect. The pickles are great. I would say this is worth the hype. Maybe not losing your life over. But as, as far as fast food goes, Bon Appetit is great and all their food is usually really good. But they got a challenge on their hands today. Now guys, I know what you might be thinking. Did I just do a fried chicken sandwich recipe from Bon Appetit a few weeks ago? Yes, I did. As you'll see by the ingredients though, this one is fundamentally different in every way possible. So grab yourself some flour and iceberg lettuce, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, some Marty's rolls. I say that because in the video, Claire specifically says to use Marty's large sesame seed hamburger buns. I'm trying to get this exactly right so I can give them a fair comparison. But you're also gonna need to grab some cornstarch and light brown sugar, bread and butter pickles and paprika, cayenne pepper, baking powder, celery seeds, mayonnaise, lemon juice, buttermilk, some boneless skinless chicken thighs, pepper, fresh chives, fresh garlic, an egg, some butter, and your favorite hot sauce. Now right off the bat, this kind of proves my point. We can't go anywhere near making a sandwich for at least a day because we need to salt our chicken and leave it uncovered in the fridge for at least 24 hours. This is actually a combination of some salt, some brown sugar, and some baking powder. Now, I believe the baking powder is responsible for drying out just the exterior of the chicken to further enhance our crunchy outer texture. The following day, I hopped right back into the kitchen and started preparing everything else I was going to need, starting with our seasoned mayo. I have never used celery seeds in my life. I didn't know it was even a thing, but they smell great, and I tasted this mix at the end, and it has a really nice flavor. I also love the fact that you use that mix for more than just spreading it on your buns. You actually use that to dress your lettuce at the very end as well, but we'll get there in a bit. Now, as with all fried chickens, you are going to need your wet and your dry bowls. Your dry consists of your flour, cornstarch, garlic and onion powders, paprika, cayenne, and salt. Much like Chris's katsu sandwich, this one has some heat introduced every step of the way uh, in the wet batter, in the dry batter, also a little sprinkle at the very end when you're throwing the sandwich together, so this should be really flavorful. I carefully dipped each and every one of my chicken thighs into my dry mix, shook off any excess, and then you actually want to pour in some of your wet batter into your dry to create little corn flaky bits. I'm avoiding any comparisons of a medicated lotion, such as calamine, <laughs> when I'm dipping them into my wet batter. Uh, that's obviously the result of the sriracha in there. Uh, but finish them off in your dry batter once again and let them sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes to let all that stuff set and stick to the chicken. In 350 degree oil, we are going to fry up our chicken. I did two pieces at a time as to not overcrowd my pan. 
and about five or six minutes later, they're looking beautifully golden brown. The spices that are getting toasted on the outside of the seasoning smells incredible. I did want to let these cool down quite a bit and let some of that oil drip off, so in the meantime, I grabbed my cast iron skillet and toasted up some of the Marty Large Sesame Seed Buns. These are definitely not what I would reach for if I was making my ultimate cheeseburger or chicken sandwich, but that is what our Lord and Savior Claire calls for, so that is what I did today. The last thing you have to do is shred up some of your iceberg lettuce in nice, thin, crispy strands. By all means, go for romaine or some other type of lettuce if you have it. Iceberg is just perfectly crispy and light, and when mixed with a little bit of our seasoned mayo and actually a little bit of our pickling brine, you just can't get anything better, really. And with that, we can construct our finalized version of Bon Appetit's perfect spicy chicken sandwich. I gave a nice little drizzle of my sriracha to finish it all off, and this smells incredible, especially when next to our Popeyes. So let's give this baby a try. Welcome back, guys. It's flat enough. It's just a reminder that I don't have merch this year. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a refresher, I have another one here because it's been so long since I had one, I have to remind myself what they taste like. It's really just an excuse to eat an entire another sandwich. Usually when something's really, really good from a fast food or a cheaper restaurant, it's because like one or two specific items in the dish makes it. You can't say that about this. The chicken's perfect, the bread is perfect, the sauce has a perfect amount of spice, the pickles, okay. Um, I was kind of surprised with the bread choice. Usually brioche buns or potato rolls are preferred for really good sandwiches, hamburgers, stuff like that. I'm a beauty guru, <laughs> except <laughs> with my fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> As you can hear, the peanut gallery is back again. Um, this is going to be really hard because my love of sriracha and how well this chicken is seasoned and cooked. Look how good this looks. Super crispy, super flavorful, juicy as could be. The lettuce in this really breaks up the fatty kind of richness from the butter, the oil, that's kind of lacking here, but this is like perfect in its simplicity. I don't know. <laughs> I'll say this, if this did not have the lettuce and the sauce in there, and it was just the bun, pickles, and chicken like this, uh, it would be easy to pick this one. In a shocking turn of events, if you put these two on a plate and said you're allowed to eat either one, but only one, I'd probably pick this. It could be a little bit of bias towards sriracha because I love that sauce and that flavor profile. But for the price and the convenience of this, you can't go wrong with it either. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Now I know last week I did say whichever recipe in the comments got the most likes is what I will do this week. But all I was seeing was Bon Appetit's making Thanksgiving perfect recipes. And I have a plan for those already later in the month, so I'm gonna hold off on those. I hope you guys are satisfied with this one today. If you do not follow me on Instagram and Twitter, do so, that's down in the description. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. And my money super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision We can make it out to Look how good this looks Super crispy, super flavorful Juicy as could be Juicy as could be <laughs> I don't know where that came from I truly and honestly do not know how David Dobrik does this you got 25 people in every direction staring at me. It's only a matter of time before security comes and nabs us and says you can't film in here. 
Actually, fun fact, this is the mall that Impractical Jokers films some of their skits in, oh, so yeah. 